Hi, I'm Tanya and this is my channel Just Let Me Sew. Thank you very much for joining me today for another vlog. I hope you are well wherever you are and that you have got some sewing done or you are hatching some nice plans to do some sewing. Um, so today I'm going to share with you some of my recent makes and what I have been up to. So um, before I start that, I will first of all tell you what I am wearing because I am usually terrible at forgetting to say what I'm wearing. Um, cardigan is just a ready to wear cardigan and the t-shirt is a self-drafted um, t-shirt which was inspired by the solar tea. And I'm just taking off my cardigan to show you the sleeves. Um, I did share details of this in a vlog quite a while ago, a good few months ago, but I hacked just a normal t-shirt pattern, um, dropped the sleeve and added this ruffle. I think I did a sort of 1.5, um, a 1.5 multiplication to make the ruffle of the, um, I'm not making any sense of the arm, the arm seam, uh, the sleeve seam to get that ruffle. So I timed it by 1.5. That makes sense. I got there in the end, I think. Um, yeah, and the fabric is from First for Fabrics. Again, I got this a while ago. I feel like it was sort of a year ago. I was on their website the other day. They don't have this colourway anymore, but they have got it in a sort of pale blue colour, which is very pretty as well. It's a really small animal print, and I've got it in this lilac colourway, which is really pretty. So long sleeve t-shirt with the, the ruffles. So... Um, well, if you watched my last vlog, you will know that I have been quite busy lately um, working on the Sophisticated event and challenge. And that is the first thing that I'm going to share with you about what I have been making recently. So in my last vlog, I shared the actual outfit that I wore. But today I'm going to show you the twirl that I made for just the blouse. I only twirl the blouse of it. And that is it behind me there. I'll just grab it for you. So I made up this blouse and skirt co-ord set for the Sophisticated event and I used New Look uh, 6697. So it's got this really cropped blouse and the interesting detail is the little curved lapel. So it's not pointy, it's got a little curve there. I found it came together really, really easily. It's got quite a dropped sleeve, so it's a very boxy fit. And it comes to um, the top of your hips, so just around your sort of natural waist. So if you did want to lengthen it, you just need to bear that in mind. I made it up in a cotton from Rainbow Fabrics, which I got a good few years ago. They definitely wouldn't have it in stock anymore. I bought it as one of those sort of um, offers, three metres for however much it was. So I've got loads of it left over. And it's been sitting in my stash for ages because it was one of those ones that arrived and I thought, oh, actually, I don't actually know what I would make <laughs> out of this fabric. So I think it suits this shirt really well. It's a nice cotton, so it's perfect for the summer. Um, what I would say is if you do make this up, it doesn't um, sit that well underneath a jumper or a cardigan because it is cropped. So it does sort of tend to rise up a little bit. I like to have things tucked in. So if you wanted to make it for a winter top, um, winter blouse, I would recommend lengthening it so that you can then have it tucked in. Otherwise, wearing those jumpers in the colder months, it's probably going to rise up a little bit. What else can I say about this pattern? Um, as I said, it's very simple to put together. It hasn't got a back yoke. It's just one back bodice piece. The collar is inserted, um, I think it's kind of a fiddly way to insert a collar because it hasn't got a collar stand, it just attaches straight onto the bodice and then you secure it with the facing, so the placket facing sort of all comes together that way and then you top stitch the collar down, secure it in place from the inside and then that is hidden by the collar anyway so you can't see that um so it's not like a massively complicated way of doing it it's just perhaps not the cleanest way to do it because it hasn't got that collar stand either but quite quick um the label i used is one that i had made up myself it says oh hello you uh, which i did after 
Moira Rose, if you watch the programme Shit's Creek, you will know that that's one of her little catchphrases. And I did it in the, had to be black, black and white, typical of the programme as well. So I just like that whenever you see it, it's, it's funny. Oh, hello you. Um, and then just short sleeve. So that is that. Nothing else really to say about that blouse. I did the wearable twirl and I didn't have to make any adjustments to it at all. The only thing to factor in is if you want it longer, it's drafted to finish above your hips. So if you want it longer, you're going to need to grade out for it. So then I will quickly share with you the outfit that I made for Sophisticated. I have talked about this in quite a lot of detail in my previous vlog, which was all about Sophisticated. So if you want all the details, have a look at my last vlog to find out about that. But it's behind me. You can't miss it because it's bright pink. Um, and here we go. This is the blouse made up in my good fabric in this lovely fuchsia hot pink with cut out detail and little black embroidered flowers. Love this fabric from Walthamstow Market. And I chose some little black buttons from Totally Buttons. And they're sort of like a shell. So they have a bit of uh, texture to them. They're not completely flat. It's pretty. And then the label is a little rosy cheeks, you deserve to dream. For the collar on this one, I just lined it with similar colour cotton voile. I wasn't too sure how it would work out if I would have enough of the fabric that didn't have cut out detail to do the back of the collar as well. So I just used a cotton voile for that. I didn't bother lining this because I just used um, a nude colour bra so you can't see anything anyway. And the button placket is quite wide, comes out to about there. So that covers quite a, a good chunk as well. So that's the blouse. And then the skirt is a nice, simple, straightforward pencil skirt, which I did line. Again, I've talked about this in quite a lot of detail in my last vlog, so go check that out. But I lined it again in a cotton voile and I did a bit of a, a quick and dirty insertion of the lining there because I was running out of time and it finishes with an invisible zip which I managed to get in the same colour as well and it's got a little waistband there which is was a curved waistband. Um, for this one I do find with uh, big four patterns they come up a bit generous sometimes so it put me at a size 14 but actually I ended up grading or taking it in quite a little bit so it's probably more like a size 12 but I always prefer to err on the side of caution with things like that because you can take things in but you can't really let them out that much so I went for a 14 and then just took it in a little bit. So that was my outfit for Sophisticated and making that kind of hung over me for quite a while. I'm really really bad when it comes to challenges that if I know I have to do something I procrastinate and I don't want to do it and it just becomes like a chore that hangs over me. So it took me quite a long time to get that done, but now it's done, I feel refreshed and I can go again with my sewing. And my sojo did come back after that. I thought um, after doing that, I would do a nice, quick, simple project. So I had ordered with my daughter some very sweet mermaid fabric from Simple Life Fabrics. I'll show you. It's flashed up on my Instagram while I was scrolling one day and my daughter happened to just peer over and say, what's that? And she said she wanted it. Um, I've talked about her before on my vlog and my channel that she can be a little bit contrary, as a lot of uh, little five-year-old, six-year-olds can be, that one day she likes something, the next day she really hates it. And sure enough, we ordered this, it arrived, the next weekend, she then decided to declare, I hate mermaids. I don't like mermaids. My favourite colour is black. I don't want anything to do with mermaids, unicorns, you know, all the typical girly stuff. <laughs> so I said, oh, well, what should we do with that mermaid fabric that we bought? Shall I give it to your cousin? And that immediately made her say, no, 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 I, I still like it. I still want it. So we did make something up and I will insert a picture of her wearing it. So it's a dress. Just a simple fitted jersey dress with long sleeves and then a gathered skirt and leggings. 
And for both of those items, I just traced around something that she already had. So for the dress, I folded it in half, traced around it, actually literally just cut straight into the fabric with the dress on top, and then allowed a centimetre seam allowance all the way around. And then for the back, I just folded it the other way and did the same again, cutting the fabric on the fold. And for the skirt, I just went along the bottom measurement of the dress skirt and um, cut a straight rectangle, gathered the top and then attached it. And for the leggings, again, I just drew around the pair of leggings that she already had um, and they fit her really well. She really likes it. Uh, she's worn it already and it's currently in the wash. So that is why I can only show you the scraps of fabric that I've got left. But beautiful cotton jersey from Simple Life Fabrics, really good quality. Who is it by? Uh, Poppy. Yeah, Poppy Fabrics. They do lovely jerseys, always really, really good quality. And it's got these lovely little gold sparkles through it as well. So very pleased with that. Came together really quickly. I think I cut it out one evening, sewed it up the next. So nice, easy project to get on with. The final project that I have made up I mean, I say made up, it's not technically finished, but I feel that it's pretty close. Um, I thought this was going to be a nice palette cleanser as well. And it turned out to be a bit more complicated <laughs> than I thought. So it is the Pattern Scout Brigitte Tea. And I will put a picture of the stock images, the line drawings here. So I bought the pattern as a PDF and I got it printed out on fold line. I usually get my patterns uh, PDFs printed out because firstly, I don't know where my printer is. It's downstairs in a box somewhere. And second of all, I just not a fan of taping all of those pieces together. So I usually get them printed out. Um, meanwhile, I had a quick look at the fabric requirements for it and it said I needed 1.1 metres, so I thought, I'm sure I can get that out of the metre, it'll be fine. Um, and then <laughs> the other day, I was cutting it out while chatting to some um, lovely sewing friends on a Zoom call, and I realised that the cutting layout was actually really, really tight. Sometimes you see um, fabric requirements and you think, oh, I'll be fine, I can, I can squeeze that, I can do a bit of pattern Tetris. But this one, they had really butted all of the pieces right up next to each other. So there was no wriggle room at all, which I hadn't noticed when I had bought the fabric. I think probably because I literally just bought the pattern, sent it off for printing, didn't download it, just had a quick look at the fabric requirements on the fold line. So didn't really realise how actually tight it was. So that's a warning. If you want to get the Brigitte tee, go for the 1.1. In fact, I'd probably say go for one and a half because I did manage to squeeze it out. Probably uh, one metre might be stretching it a little bit. Um, I had to use a little bit of scrap black jersey in a slightly off shade black that I had in my stash to do the back lining of the bodice. And I also had to piece it together. So I've got a seam line, which I'll show you in a minute. So definitely go for 1.5. I've also had to make my three quarter length sleeve. So it's a bit of a, a mash up this pattern. And I had a couple of issues along the way. So let me just grab my finished top for you. Finished, as I say, not completely finished. So please don't judge. It was one of those projects, if you know what I mean. Um, so I haven't washed it yet. So I have got some wonder tape here, which will wash away. They get you to use wonder tape along the, the front. And what I love about this pattern is it's got this square neckline, which really reminded me of, I think it was like the 90s when square tops were quite fashionable and all like the baggy trousers and the hoodies and all of that it seems to be quite popular again now. So it does make me laugh. I remember when I was a teenager, I did not feel fashionable at all wearing all of those clothes, but now they seem to be fashionable. So perhaps I can pretend I was a, a trendy teenager. I definitely wasn't. So that's the square neckline. Um, I made a mistake when it came to attaching the back bodice to the front bodice, because as you can see, it's got a seam line just there. So this is the back 
and it kind of folds over, flaps over to then attach to this bottom section, which is your front bodice. And I made a mistake when I was reading the pattern instructions, totally my fault. My brain did not register the word between. So you sandwich the front to the back and then the front lining piece, something like that. I can't quite remember what it was, but I didn't do that. Went ahead and surged it without basting it. And then as I unfolded it, turned it right side round, I realised, oh, I've got a seam line on the right side of the pattern. Fantastic. Great. I was in no mood to be unpicking serge of stitches. Plus, I was worried that I would stretch out the fabric if I did do that. So I just cut it off. Started again. Reapplied the wonder tape. This time round, my overlocker decided it didn't like wonder tape. And it just sort of did that thing where it stays on the one point and just keeps sewing the stitches so you end up with loads of little stitches on the one bit it basically got stuck where the seam gets a bit bulky and the wonder tape kicked in so that means here i have got some nasty little puckering where my overlocker didn't really like what was going on so yes but I'm treating this as a sort of wearable twirl. I'm hoping nobody will really notice. Um, what I did also notice was that this is a little bit gapy here. It does get you to understitch, but I think probably a couple of things might have happened. When I had this mishap here, it's probably stretched out a little bit. And also, I had a little bit of a query about the sizing of the pattern. Um, now, I will admit, I do get confused by written instructions sometimes. Um, I do have to read things a few times. I'm much more of a visual learner. But if I just grab my notes, because this is a stretch pattern, it does come with some negative ease, which is fine, you would expect. So when I looked at the measurements on the pattern, it put me at a size six, which is a full bust of 34 inches and hips of 38. I'm a hip 39, but I thought, that's fine, I'll just go for a six. But then when I looked at the finished garment measurements, a size six would have put me at a full bust of 31 inches and three quarters, which is fine, but the hips would have been 31 and three quarter inches. So that would have been a negative ease of six inches, which I didn't really want on my hips. I didn't want it like that tight. Um, the pattern says that the target negative ease is 10%. So what I didn't understand was if size 6 is a hip of 38, 10% of that is if you round up about 4 inches, isn't it? So why have they got the negative ease at nearly 6 inches for the hips? Again, I might be reading that incorrectly. So do put in the comments below if you've made this pattern before and you can spot the mistake that I've made. But anyway, I thought, well, I really don't want a pattern that's too tight around my hips. So I'm going to go up to the finished garment measurement that I feel I would be comfortable with, which would have been a size 10. Um, so I then thought, well, I can always take it in if I need to. But what I didn't factor in really was the full bust measurement. It said the full bust would have been about 34 inches. So I thought, oh, that's okay. It just won't be too tight around my bust area, which is probably no bad thing. But then I didn't think about the gaping issue that might be there. So what I did try to do when I finished it and I realized there was this gaping, I went around the armhole area and just tried to pull it in a little bit. So I took away about a centimeter but that didn't really make that much difference. So I'm thinking it may just be where the fabric stretched out a little bit when I was having to do those um, corrections there. So I think next time, nearly getting to my point, sorry I'm rambling on about this top, <laughs> next time I will make a size six as the pattern says and then I will grade out to a 10 at the hip. So I will do it small to big and do it that way instead. But I do really love this pattern, I really like the square neckline, I'll try and insert a picture of me wearing it here. Again, excuse the wonder tape that you'll be able to see. Um, I also didn't, you probably spotted it anyway, but I didn't mention how I had to join together two pieces for the lining. So that's just the lining 
there that I've joined together. It also doesn't have you uh, finish the bottom of your lining pieces. It doesn't really matter because it's jersey, but I did think if this fabric starts to curl up, it, it would be good to have it surged before you sew it all together. So again, I will try and put the picture there. And I am going to make another one. I had ordered just a metre of a burgundy colour, but I've now ordered another metre because a metre definitely won't be enough. And I don't have any scraps in my stash that would, would help me piece it together. The final thing that I have quickly made up, I did this sort of as um, on a whim because uh, we have a kitten. Well, she's six months old and she is into everything. And a lot of the time she does actually come into the sewing room with me, but sometimes I have to chuck her out because she gets into everything. And one of the things that she really loves doing is sitting on top of my sewing machine. Sometimes if there's some thread in there, she'll have a go at pulling at the thread. Um, but the worst thing is my overlocker. So even when I have the thread stand pushed down, she'll still have a great time spinning the spools of thread around and getting it into a right mess. So I thought I need to make myself a cover for it. You might be shocked to hear I don't have a cover for my overlocker or my sewing machine. So they do get a bit dusty, so I have to wipe them down. I really should have a cover, so this was long overdue. So I will just grab the cover that I made. I made this up with some scrap gingham that I had from um, a McCall's pattern that I made a while ago. So you might recognize this, but I've made it nice and big. It's basically um, like a cube without a bottom on it. And I've made a little handle as well. And I'll try and put a picture of it over the overlocker there, but it's nice and loose. so. I was worried that if I made it too tight, as I lifted it off, it might pull some of the thread off with it. So it's nice and loose. There's no pattern matching going on at all here because this was all just made up of scraps and some of the panels you can see there, I had to piece it together, but a really great scrap buster. And how I did it was I just measured the height, the width, the depth of my overlocker and um, made a sort of drawing in my sketchbook similar to, I don't know if you remember at school when you would make little paper boxes, you would have a sort of little cross template, um, sort of like that. See if I can find a picture of my drawing and insert it there and just added seam allowances and then just sewed all of the little bits together. Like in uh, school where you would have glued all the little flaps together, I was just sewing it together, if that makes any sense at all. And then hemmed the bottom. And then as I said, just this little handle that I've attached there as well. So that is already coming in really useful. Just today, um, the cat has been sitting on my sewing machine again. So I do need to make a similar one for my sewing machine too. That is everything that I have been making up recently. I hope you've enjoyed having a little look at what I have been making. If you have enjoyed today's video, please would you consider giving me a little thumbs up? It really does help my video to get pushed out there a little bit more. And if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, if you would like to subscribe, that would be fantastic to have you along as well. I do hope you've enjoyed watching and I hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye.